any second. Are you a uh, family or how do you? No, I just help him out sometimes. Oh. We met at Fort Charles. He was my commanding officer. Oh, no kidding. Okay. Yeah, I was, I was up in uh, the Aleutians uh, in the Navy. See any action? I once stopped some, a platoon from <laughs> going over an anthill. Uh, I didn't really go over too well with my commander. Jeff Dalmas is here to see you, Mr. Fellows. That's Jack, actually. Jack Dalmas is here to see you. How do you do? Carlin? Get Mr. Dalmas a glass. A glass of what? Um, club soda would be just fine if you have it, thanks. Carlin? Fill that glass with club soda. I spoke to your agency yesterday. Sydney? Sydney Green, yes. 
He said you're a recent hire. Yeah, I hope that doesn't bother you. Um, Sydney likes recent hires. He says they uh, offer a fresh perspective. Um, I wish there were more people like him, actually. All right. Here it is, then. My wife, Dinah, died 14 months ago of cirrhosis. In her vanity, she left instructions in her will that she was to be embalmed. I saw to it that nothing prevented the fulfillment of her last wishes. Dr. Grant Ara was generous enough to assist me. Have you heard of him? No. He is a good man. Specializes in what he calls the artistically rendered sleep of a permanently rendered subject. He specializes, so he's done this many times. Dinah's body was preserved by replacing her blood with glycerin. Like I said, he's very good. You should have seen it. Um, I definitely hope to. Dinah's been stolen. Stolen? It was up to Carlin to keep the room clean, to tell Dinah jokes to entertain her. It's what she wanted. It was specified in her will. I tried doing this at first, but at some point I, um, I kept expecting her to move. But she wouldn't. Do you understand? Yeah, I think I do. When did the body disappear? I discovered Dinah missing the day before yesterday. So, Saturday? Saturday, yes. Yet, she was here Friday night. I, um... I had three ladies over that particular evening. It's quite the lifestyle you have. Don't be testy, Mr. Dalmas. I had been seeing them for some time, but after a while, I began to become bored with them. And yet, they were fixated on me. Not because of my status. They liked my performance in other areas. Yet I seek novelty in all aspects of my life, so I knew that commitment to any one of them was not an option. So I thought, what better way than to have all three of them over and confess to them all at once. Is that what you did? Yes. They left without a single word of protest. Complete silence, if you can believe that. I thought it was too good to be true. So I went to bed that evening and didn't give the matter another thought. Well, the next morning I woke up and I checked in on Dinah and that's when I discovered... She was gone. Uh, what about your uh, little helper here, Mr. Carlin? I served with Carlin. I know him better than any other human being on this earth. May I see the room? There is nothing in there for you, Mr. Dalmas. Look, if you want me if you want me to do a decent job, you're going to have to let me see that room. It's essential. Do you see the axe hanging on the wall? That's the axe I used when my temper left me. It's a slipshod axe. It's the same axe that Che Guevara used when he disappeared in the mountains of Sirito. Do you understand the sort of blemishes a tool like that can inflict? Yeah, I think so. Then stay away from that room, Mr. Dalmas. I disposed of everything in it, save for a thin strand of Dinah's hair. Not even enough to make a ring. We'll be in touch. When you find Dinah, please be gentle with her. She was rather, you might even say militant, to not allow any photographs taken of her because they were never good enough. The photo inside that file was taken after the embalming.
operated under Admiral George Somerset in the Aleutians of Alaska. My duties were to scan the dreams of any officer suspected of criminal wrongdoing. When Somerset asked me to indulge him in scanning his own dreams, I complied. He became disturbed by my findings and determined I should be disposed of lest I relate those findings to the wrong people. That is why your superiors asked you to drop me into the Sargosa Sea. Do you understand? The entity known as Cadman is still aware you disobeyed the order to dispose of me. If he finds us here, we will modify your injections based on my specifications. A stronger dosage will keep Cadman from entering your mind. Proceed with your new job and leave the illusions behind you. Remember, you lack nothing for the days ahead. Well, I went to see Commander Collins. We then went to see Captain Webster. Captain Webster made a call to Rear Admiral Gifford. Rear Admiral Gifford sent a fax to Vice Admiral Madison. Vice Admiral Madison then contacted Fleet Admiral Somerset via telegraph. That doesn't surprise me one bit. Jack Dalmas worked under Commissioner Tom Barnes, who was Admiral Somerset's nephew. Yes. Dalmas was a callow boy. He traveled back and forth from the Aleutians to the Sargasso Sea, disposing of special boxes. It was a job no one wanted. 33% of the people who travel there never come back. What was in those boxes? Something confidential, you know. Oh, yes. Well, one day, Dalmas comes back pale as a ghost, claims he was being followed by some guy named Cadman. When the doctor examined him, he found a head wound that was two days old. Some operatives were sent to the Sargasso, but they didn't find anyone named Cadman. Oh, they didn't find anyone at all. So Dalmas was given a medical discharge and a sort of liquid prescription. They didn't want to take any chances, but as far as I know, Dalmas hasn't had any visions since. He seems pretty stand-up. Yeah, I think that Cadman fantasy was a one-time deal, but like I said, they don't want to take any chances. Carlin, what do you think of Dalmas? I don't think he's very book smart, but he sure is dedicated. He won't stop until he finds the solution. How's the head? It's fine. No visions? No visions. You're not seeing shit, are you? Uh, no, I'm not, I don't think so. You see me, don't you? Yeah, I do. I don't want to see Your medicine's you. failing, then. Your medicine. I don't know for sure, but it looks to be that... Maybe you need a stronger dose. You cannot see or hear me without the proper dosage in your veins, can you? Hmm. So you're the squeamish type. Yeah, I guess. The Navy doesn't like squeamish types. <sighs> no, they don't. If I say a man is squeamish, then his life is too simple. He's not experiencing enough agony. Why would a lady want to be with you? Squeamish, cowardly? Put that thing away, please. Just put it away. You don't give orders to me. Once again, look at yourself. I don't know. Look at yourself.
I need more, Doc. I ran out. I need more injections. I gave you enough injections for a month. I had to use a double dosage. Without my permission? Yeah, it was necessary, all right? I'm sorry. Are the visions back? Uh, and I think I'm, uh, I'm developing some sort of immunity to this Serenol 5 or 4 or whatever you want to call it because I'm not feeling a damn thing. What thing. happened last night? I got the worst shakes ever. Is that all? No. Cadman. He just, uh, he just, he kept, he just spoke this nonsense. It was like, uh, it was just gibberish. I couldn't, I couldn't make heads or tails of it. That doesn't sound too bad. Okay, I'm writing you this prescription for Serenol 5. Next time, don't wait until you run out. All right, I, I, thank you. I, I appreciate that. I know sometimes I can be a little, a little careless. Yes, I know. Yeah, careless. Okay, I can get those to you by Friday. Friday? Friday? What if, what if he comes back before then, Doc? Ignore him. <laughs> Ignore him. It's easier said than done. By the way, I'm seeing Commander Barnes soon. He thinks he has a hernia, but I disagree. I think it's just nerves. Did you want me to say hello? No, no, I he'll just, he'll just want to play catch up. I, I hate talking on the phone. You, I hate talking, period, to be honest. I just, you hate talking. Yeah. Uh, how are you supposed to get into a relationship if you don't like communication, if you don't, don't like talking? I don't know, that yeah, doesn't matter to me. I don't like women anyway. You don't? I'm into old people. Fish, animals, I like machines. Machines? Yeah, they, they uh, tend to treat me as their equal. I like that. The higher dosage won't be available till Friday. That is not good. I don't ever want to see Cadman again. Then we need to change your structure. What good will that do? Your mannerisms, your energy, your genetics. Uh, I don't understand. Everything. Stand up and grab your Bible. My Bible? What good will that do? Please do as I say. Something's gonna happen, isn't it? Thanks for making me feel like you're equal. But, uh... Means a lot. Open to the marked page and read the underlined verse. Then Job answered and said, how long will ye vex my soul and break me in pieces with words? These ten times have ye reproached me. Ye are not ashamed that ye make yourselves strange to me. And if it indeed that I have erred, mine error remaineth with myself. Have pity upon me. Have pity upon me, O ye my friends, for the hand of God hath touched me. Why do ye persecute me as a god and are not satisfied with my flesh? Oh, that my words were now written, oh, that they were printed in a book, that they were graven with an iron pen and lead in the rock forever. For I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God, whom I shall see for myself, and mine eyes shall behold, and not another.
Ernest Fellows writes, It is with the utmost regret that I point to Gypsy Miles as the first of my three suspects for the theft of my wife's embalmed corpse. Gypsy used to own an antique shop on Magnate Street. She is now unemployed. As a teenager, she spent six months in a juvenile rehabilitation institution. She assaulted her history teacher with a blackjack. Her roommate is Shad Mueller, employee of the Wyland County Register. Gypsy Miles? Yes. Jack Dalmas, I'm investigating Ernest Fellows. You're a private investigator? Freelance investigator. You look like a Bible salesman. I don't sell Bibles. Not yet, anyway. Look, I, I won't ask you if I can come in. I wasn't gonna let you. Perfect, then uh, we're on the same page. Honey, I wouldn't be caught in the same zip code as you. Ernest is suspected of keeping an embalmed corpse within the confines of his property. Now, keeping a corpse is not in itself an illegal act, as long as one observes the proper health codes. Otherwise, you risk the health of not only the occupants in your own house, but of the neighbors, especially those living within 60 yards. Do you follow me? Well, this is vaguely intriguing, I must admit. We don't know much about the corpse or whether it exists. His house was checked up and down, side to side, at right angles. Nothing was found save for a few little blonde strands. Little blonde strands? Of hair, hardly enough to make a ring. And when the city examined them, it was determined that these strands belonged to a dead head. How sweet. They were attached to a corpse for at least one year. That much we know. And what does this have to do with me again? Well, you dated Mr. Fellows, didn't you? Briefly, I used to run an antique shop. He came in to buy a 1953 slipshod axe. Oh, he told me that axe used to belong to Che Guevara. Yeah, that's what I told him. How else was I to knock the price up? The thing is, we have a witness that claims to have seen the embalmed corpse. The witness also claims to have seen you inside the house as well. With the embalmed corpse? Uh, you two were in separate rooms. I don't know anything about no corpse. Of course not. Uh, our witness never said you were intimate with it. What? I mean, uh, well, what, what, what we want to know is, uh, did Ernest say anything to you that might determine if he's in possession of a corpse? No. Did you see anything? Smell anything? No. The toughest part is trying to figure out who this corpse could be. Our witness thinks it's his mother. It's not his mother, it's his wife. Oh? Not that I know anything about it. But if he were to keep a dead woman around, it'd be his wife. He is a widower, you know. Yes, but uh, wasn't he close to his mother? From what he told me, uh, his mother died when he was little. Ah. Ah. I understand he's still not over her. His wife, I mean. No, he's not. Write sonnets about their sex life. He wasn't in love with her. He was just fixated on her looks. Is that right? He claimed she was a model for mystery novel dust jackets, but there was nothing special about that face. It wasn't the face of a model? Hell no. Did you ever get to meet her? Nope, never did. I didn't meet Ernest until after she croaked. But you're familiar with what she looks like? Huh? I said you're familiar with what she looks like. Oh, I get it. What? I know your game. I'm not gonna say another word. What? Yeah, what? But no one's accusing you of anything, Gypsy. I want you to leave now. Just two more questions. Excuse me.
stand up. So you're not a Bible salesman? No. Do you believe in God? Sure. So you believe in meaning? Sure. Angels? Coincidences? Yeah, why not? You ever seen an angel? Have I ever seen an angel? No. But I feel presences. You feel what? Presences. Even Jesus can't save you now. Yes. Bible salesman, right? No, I'm a detective. A private investigator? Freelance investigator. What's the difference? How about you? What's your name? Peter Rabbit. Now listen, I know you're new to this line of work, and that's admirable. But trust me when I say that you don't have the spirit for what's ahead. In other words? In other words, you have zero qualifications for the demands of this job. You'd be better off being employed as a furniture tester. What's a furniture tester? It's a nice gig. You get to relax for a living. But I don't want to relax. I want to feel stress and anxiety. Why? Did you hear that? That was hypermorse. I insulted you 100 times within the span of three seconds. Now, think what else I could do. Take care, free eye. Have a rock ready on your chest at all times. Hypermorse. Hypermorse. What did I dream of last night? I did not scan you. You need my permission before you can scan me? I will not scan you without your permission. Didn't you scan prisoners without consulting them first? Prisoners, yes. Superior officers are another matter. I'm not part of the Navy anymore. As long as I depend on you for my preservation, I will defer all of my abilities, as limited as they are, to your service. I appreciate that. And I appreciate your decision not to dispose of me at the circle so... 
What sort of dreams did Admiral Somerset have? They must have been awfully bad for him to want to silence you. I'm sorry, Jack Thomas. That is confidential information. The man tries to destroy you, and you're going to respect his privacy. I do not take his decision to destroy me as a personal affront. He was only trying to protect his reputation. He spent a great deal of time in building it. I'm betting his dreams involve treason. On this matter, I will keep my own counsel. Would he have been court-martialed if he described those dreams to his colleagues? Yes. So he had reasons to be afraid of you? Yes. He had reason to be afraid of me. I will not scan you. No, you can scan me, that's okay. Just, just don't tell me about it unless I ask you. I have things in there. Terrible things. I'd rather not know about them myself. Understood. Jack Thomas, what do you intend to use me for? I don't intend on using you for anything, I just enjoy having you around. I've never been in the ocean. Never? Never. It's assault. If I ingest more than a tablespoon, that's the end of me. Every summer, I would stay at home while my brothers went snorkeling. Did that make you feel resentful? Oh yeah. Sometimes I wish they'd... Listen, Shad. Carl and I have another appointment soon. It's okay. I won't chain you up with tales from my childhood. I just wanted to let you know that a free eye came by the house. A free eye? Yeah. So asking all sorts of questions about you. About me? Said Dinah's body was snatched from your house? That's what he said? Hey, I know it's none of my business, but he got gypsy wise about the whole embalmment thing. Said you kept her in the guest room. Jesus, Mary and Joseph. So that's his method. Hey, I'm not here to judge you. This is awkward as hell for me. And what other pearls of knowledge do you have for me today? You know what? The tide is rising. Let's go to my kiosk. Seems to me you put Gypsy on the subject list. Subject list? Suspect list. Listen, Shad, we ain't allowed to be discussing... Be quiet, Carlin. But he's right. No details. You'll have to wait until the investigation's complete. Is that so? Decidedly so. Hey. Did I ever tell you the Wyla County Register isn't faring too well these days? Less and less people are subscribing to the paper. Layoffs are at a high. It's depressing, really. Sign of the times, I guess. My editor keeps saying he wants more kick to the stories we do. That's why I like my piece on Divine Hunger. Ah, yes. I remember that story. You had a split infinitive in there. The thing is, that story was real. Sensational, yes. But real all the same. What's your point? I think this town could stand to learn a thing or two about the process of embalmment. They may even get enlightened as to what goes on behind locked doors of some of their most respected neighbors. If you type so much as a single word, Shad, I'll sue the register for every dollar. They'll sue you for every dollar. Shut up, Carlin. <laughs> Can you believe this? Just last week, we were all having drinks together, discussing archaeology. Listen, Shad, if this is some way you're trying to convince me to rekindle my romance with Gypsy. Oh, I'm not so interested in that. I just want you to call off that free eye. Gypsy's got enough stress as it is trying to find a job and stuff. Is that all? No, that's not all. Truth to tell, I wouldn't mind rekindling our relationship as well. Our relationship? I thought we had a decent rapport. Not everyone can keep up with me when I bring up topics like the Silk Road. 
Yes, we were rather fond of each other in some small but mattering way. Your patience always meant a lot to me. For every piece of trivia I mouth off, you had some correction or adjustment to make my facts. There was never anything sadistic in the way I corrected you. No, no. On the contrary, I invited such sadism. I never meant to bring you down. It wasn't so bad. At least not in my Listen, end. Shad, why are you being so protective about Gypsy? If she didn't steal Dinah, then what's the harm in answering just a few questions from a professional in my employ? You know what? You're right. I am being too protective of this woman. I've fallen pretty hard for her. So I want her to feel protected. That's what the women want, you know? Then buy her an alarm. Carl and I have business elsewhere. Call me in a month after I have this matter settled. In the meantime, tend to your own garden. Tend to my own garden? You know, I've never been in the ocean. It's a salt. If I ingest just one tablespoon, that's the end of me. Listen to me. I know things look bleak right now, but you give me some time, I know I can throw the court for a loop. Things don't get better? I'm going for a very long swim. Oh, don't overthink it. It's not worth thinking about, is it? I'm right about this. Don't lose your trust in my methods. No, Krita. I'll stay the course like you're telling me. God bless us, everyone. It is with regret and candor that I point to Krita Ogar and the theft of my wife's embalmed corpse. Krita Ogar is a lawyer. She deals with the scum of the earth. I recommend you do not reveal your real name. Krita Ogar used to undergo shock therapy. Normally, Krita can be found in her office on Equation Street, though sometimes you can find her in the parking lot near the Baptist Church, meditating. <laughs> Sweet Jesus! No, I'm Carl Gavin. Uh, we spoke on the phone. You said you'd be in this vicinity. Bible salesman, right? No, no. I've been to your office before. I tried to speak to you as you were shuffling about. I have you now. Yeah, you blew me off rather rudely, remember? You're lying, Mr. Gavin. Goodbye. This is not a mundane request. It happens to involve my wife. Don't they all? She's dead. Sorry to hear that. And her body's been snatched from my house. You have two minutes. Start talking. Is there some place we can go sit down together? Two minutes, Mr. Gavin. Okay. I had her corpse embalmed. What? This is her. More dead than alive. That's her. Yes, she was very vain. Uh, didn't go in for cremation or burial. This better not be a gag. I have the certificate of embalmment right here, signed by Dr. Miguel Ara. Never heard of him. What he does is not uncommon. Surely you've heard of this sort of thing before. I've seen a lot of strange things in my line of work, but nothing like that. Never? Never. What about in your, uh, personal life? Pardon me? Forget it, I just, you see, there was another woman I was involved with at the time of her death, and I am almost certain that this other woman took Dinah. If you're so certain, why don't you hire a private investigator? They're called freelance investigators, Ms. Ogar. And that's what I wanted to consult you on. Is it better that I should hire one of these FIs, or is there an alternative? Mr. Gavin, I would like to provide consultation. However, I'm wrapped up right now. Oh? Your best bet is to call me tomorrow, but not before nine. You got it? All right. Oh, and don't ever try following me again. All right, all right, all right. It is with regret and candor that I point to Dame Edith 
in the theft of my wife's embalmed corpse. Dame Edith is a sociology professor. She suffers from a heart murmur. Her grandfather was Sir Naylor, founder of Naylor Spice. First off, I want to thank you for coming to me directly and not pretending to be somebody else. How do you know I'm not pretending? No offense, Mr. Domus, but you couldn't lie your way out of a preschool. I'm changing. Yeah, well, you've got a long way to go. Here, hold this. What do you think? He's very nice. So you want to know if I can help you find the body of Dinah Fellows? If I have any information. Turns out, I just might. You've seen some suspicious activity up at the Fellows residence. Want to know what happened the first time after Ernest and I made love? If it's all the same, Dame Edith, I'd rather keep to the subject at hand. I'm walking to the bathroom, and on my way I pass the guest suite, and I see Dinah's body inside, and Carlin's inside, facing her. Was Carlin engaged in any sort of, um... Maintenance? He just kept asking her questions, like, what is time? What is time? What is time? See anything else? Well, after Ernest and I made love the second time, I'm sorry, am I making you feel a little bit uncomfortable? Anyway, I saw a lady in there, and she was taking measurements of Dinah's corpse. Did you get her name? Rita Ogar. Said she was Ernest's lawyer and slammed the door in my face. I told Ernest about it the next morning. He just nodded. I met Krita Ogar in a parking lot. She wasn't very social. <laughs> well, if I met you in a parking lot, I wouldn't be very social myself. You want to hear what happened after Ernest and I made love a third time? Uh, what happened after the, uh, the third time you and Ernest Fellows made love? I was outside the guest suite again. And there was a man inside, mumbling to himself. Said his name was Shad. What was Shad doing there? Said he was filling in for Carlin. I caught him applying 52 epoxy cream to her skin. Besides Shad, Krita Ogar, and Carlin, did you see anyone else inside that room? <sighs> Just one other. He was wearing the same jacket that you are right now, and he was pounding nails into Dinah's feet. He looked at me with a gaze I will never forget. I've never felt so violated by one man's eyes. He looked right through me. Did you get his name? <sighs> Look, I'm not feeling well. Why don't you come and visit me on campus tomorrow? My office around three? Where's your office? Maynard University, Building D, Room 42. If you get lost, talk to the architects by the center fountain. The architects at the center fountain? But be careful. They have a feud going on that no one can comprehend. What about him? Him? Keep him. I'd hate to separate a son from his father. I am investigating three women, each of which is accused of stealing an embalmed corpse. Now I told you everything about them, everything that's occurred, yet I still don't know who took that corpse. Do you have any advice for me? If you want to bring them to me in a state of unconsciousness, I can scan their dreams and reveal the images to you. It may give you some insight into their past. No. I need to solve this on my own. I just thought maybe you had an opinion, that's all. If you want to know these women, I suggest you stay close to their associates. associates. Follow the paths of the ones they trust. You can learn more about a person by examining those they hold close. It is more effective than dream scanning. Always listen to the nonverbal voice. But I don't know that voice. You do. In silence.
excuse me, uh, which one of these buildings is D42? D42, that's, that's Dame Edith's class. Yes, it is. Didn't she hear what happened? She died this morning. Heart failure. Heart failure? Heart failure. Selling Bibles? No. I'm a freelance detective. I needed to question Dame Edith concerning a man named Ernest Fellows. Is that right? She spoke of that guy non-stop. Can you recall any details? Well, most of it was pretty sonnet-like. I mean, she was really into him. But if there's one thing I, I can't forget, it's that he kept the body of his dead wife in his guest room. Who cares about her? Well, did you know that she's gone missing? Stolen right out of that guest room? Funny you should say that. Mr. Fellows kept that guest room door locked, you see. But one night, her and Ernest made love. And she gets up to go to the bathroom. And when she passes the door, she hears this voice and, and get this. It's speaking Mandarin. Fong Pi! Pianza, Shasho, Ni Shasa, the Jagan New Heart! Ni Kwai Wolf! Ni Shoda Trambu! Doshi Jada! Ni Nisha Ya Pianza! Well, what's going on? What's he jabbering about? You don't want to know. This is not a mundane case, son. You better tell me exactly what he's saying. Please. This gentleman claims he knew Dame Edith intimately. Business associates or something. And she told him she saw a man hammering nails into her feet. Whose feet? The corpse. Dinah Fellows. Yeah. Say, you want to get a cup of coffee or something? I don't drink coffee. How about tea? I know a place that serves a mean valerian root. Sir, I would very much like to know more about the man hammering nails into Dinah Fellow's feet. Says Dame Edith asked the man with the hammer what his name was. The man locked his eyes with her and said, Dolmus will know who I am. Dolmus will know who I am.
You're not a brave man. You never were. Uh, I can accept that fact, but uh, you know what? I need, uh, I need time. I'm not going to take that radio to the sarcosis. I need to finish this case. You don't first. return the radio, you will die 77 deaths, 77 times, 77 times in a row. This case is important to me. <laughs> don't you understand that? No, Dalmas. The job is nothing. You're worthless. Worthless and weak. What do you want from me? What do you want me to do? Give me your word that you will take that machine back. All right, I'll do what you ask of me. You're not a brave man. Hello? Oh. Hello, Gypsy. How's your head? Better than yours. Oh, please. Be a man, will ya? I don't know. Maybe I acted a tad rash in hitting you. So, um, I'll make it up by answering anything you want. Mind if I ask about Shad? Shad's staying with me for the time being. Guards the house, does he? No, just me. He doesn't care about the house. You should see the mess he leaves. I hope you're not his financial support. Me, are you kidding? Shad works eight days a week. As your bodyguard? Shad Mueller graduated from Wellington University, third in his class. He was hired by the Wyland County Register before he had a chance to toss his cap and gown. He spent some time in West Papua covering that story about the uh, six-year-old boy who almost got eaten in a ritual sacrifice. His article was called Divine Hunger. Divine what? Divine Hunger. He left out the fact that he spent half his time sleeping with an Indonesian pop star named Sir Winda. He's very good. God, I wish I was that good. You got a way to go. Uh-huh. So Shad lives with you, but you two are pretty much just friends. Pretty much. Did Chad ever meet Ernest Fellows? Oh yeah, he was uh, in the shop when Ernest came by the first time around. Chad even encouraged me to call the number on the car that Ernest left behind. Chad liked Ernest, did he? He sure did. Three of us went out a couple of times. Had a lot in common. Such as? Ancient customs, history. We all have this thing about old stuff. Did you or Chad ever get to meet Dinah? No. Did you or Shad know that Dinah was being kept in Ernest's house? No. What sort of stories did Ernest tell you about Dinah? About Dinah? God, they number in the dozens. She used to swallow coins. She used to swallow coins? Had a thing about going under the knife. It turned her on. She was turned on by surgery? Yeah, I think it was the endorphin rush she got when they sewed her up. I don't know, I was more interested in learning about Ernest, not his wife. Must have been quite a blow when he dropped the axe. Oh. Well, the way I see it, it was fun while it lasted. Hate to make too much of a good thing, you know? Speaking of which, we'll have to do this again. What's your hurry? I've got a lot on my tray tonight, and sadly I can't take you along. What's on your tray? Don't worry about my tray, Jack. Don't worry about my tray, Jack.
Suddenly he trips on these shingles, and guess what happened? The bastard rod impaled the orphan's heart. That was the worst thing I saw in Indonesia. Uh, what about you? The weirdest thing I saw was Sarwenda. Sarwenda? The pop star. She had these great big bug eyes. I fell in love with her right away. I heard about that. Her ex-husband didn't like me screwing her, so he tried to stab me with a rollerball pen. I took that pen and shoved it in his heart. In his heart? Where else? I heard about that as well. That guy's name was Boo Hana. Boo Jana. 
Man, I'd, I'd trade my life for yours if I could. Would you? I don't know, Shad. I hear about things. I see things. Stuff happens right in front of me, but I never actually experience anything. You're a liar. Say, what's in the bag? A joke. What? I said, a joke. I'm not following you. Ujana was the accountant for a man named Isaiah Mordecai. Ever hear of him? No. He's the head of the Indonesian Mafia. <laughs> Don't you laugh. Don't you dare. I'll shove your head through this glass, Carlin. Jokes in a duffel bag? Indonesian Mafia? Do you realize how crazy you sound right now? Mordecai invited me to dinner. And the only reason I'm still alive is because he needs me to provide him with something. And what is this something? All I'm going to say is that I was supposed to deliver the goods to a guy on Vintage Street today. I'm standing there waiting for a courier, and instead a delivery boy comes up to me and hands me this. I want you to know, Shad, that I was never serious about you providing me with a dead white woman. Now please read my words carefully, for the life of that gypsy bitch you like so much will depend on what you do next. Take a knife to your stomach like those warriors of old used to. Open up your belly and save face for what you did to my accountant. If you don't, I will send twenty men to visit your gypsy, and each one will have his way with her. If you are up to this decision, please realize that you will be visiting the same void that you sent Buhana to. An empty void without perception of any kind. Face the void. Face it with honor. So you know why I'm here now? I think so. I want you to stand behind me as I kneel down. And I want you to take the knife and cut me open. You worked the Silk Road up in the Illusions. You've killed men with knives and you did it efficiently. Now please, extend me the same courtesy. You want me to kill you, and you're calling it courtesy. If you don't, Gypsy dies. Don't let this happen, please. Afterwards, take the bag and give it to Ernest. What's inside? I told you, a joke. You picked a funny time to be funny. And again, what is time? Yeah, what is time? As far as anyone is concerned, I did this to myself. You have the letter as proof. Just tell him I came here to deliver the bag. I lost my nerve. All right. Thanks. Goodbye, Gypsy.
long have I been out? Well, this isn't easy for me to say. But I have a pretty good idea that you know about my time I spent in Indonesia. You know about the guy I killed? Anyway, the dead man worked for Isaiah Mordecai. It's a pretty big deal down there. You're not paying attention, are you? Pardon? When we spoke on the phone, you mentioned something about hypermorse. What are you going to do to me? Just interpret for me. Isaiah offered me my life in exchange for a dead white woman. The top Suharto believes in the notion of divine hunger. Isaiah likes to satisfy that notion once a year. Is that Dinah? Yeah, that's her. You know, I just found out today that Isaiah was putting me on. He just wanted me to sweat it out. I'm sorry to hear that, Shad. Yeah, well, damage has been done, Jack. I even consulted an attorney. She was no help at all. Did you tell that attorney about Dinah? <laughs> no. Just about my dinner with Isaiah. Listen, Shad, why don't you return Dinah's remains to Ernest Fellows? You know, the longer you drag this out, the worse it's going to be for you. Really? Ernest Fellows is friends with rear admirals and fleet admirals and God knows who else. My career would be over. He'd see to that. What do you want to do then? I know a lot about you, Jack Domus. I know about your work in the Aleutians. I have it on good knowledge that you were at the Saragossa Sea Detail. What did you tell him? You were a sincere, dedicated officer. But certain personality quirks kept you from promotion. You could be a softy in some ways. If you saw a soldier shoot a bird out of fun, you'd climb a tree and say a prayer over the nest. On another occasion, you stopped a parade of soldiers from marching over a trail of ants. You were also prone to self-pity, because every time you went to a bar with the boys, you were the only one to go home alone. Well, I don't know it's about It's too bad none of those women gave you a chance. If only they knew how good you were with your hands. My hands? Why did you tell all this to Shad? Because you told Catelyn that you would return me to the Sargosa Sea once this case was solved. I was only stalling when I said that. You cannot resist Catelyn for much longer. Now listen closely. If you want to survive this engagement, you must return Dinah to the Ernest Fellows residence. Say you found her remains in a field. Do not implicate Shad in her theft, despite his responsibility. I can't do that. If the right people are informed that you own me, you will face a military tribunal. Shad will see to it. Right. I have made a lot of bad choices. But this case Mr. Fellows gave me, it's all I have left. I'll see it through to its proper end. What I'm proposing is the proper end. You will die if you choose any alternative course of action. Don't be foolish. 
It's too late for me. I've never known what it's like not to be foolish. But I will not make a mockery of this case. Not for you. Or anyone. Are you so sure? I'm sorry? That's the way it is. Alright. You need time. Jack, what combination of words in the English language do you like best? You want me to limit it to two words? Uh, two or four. Any combination? Any combination. All right. Um, I guess you could say my two favorite words are uh, case solved. Case solved? Those are my current favorite words, Dr. Rich. Could you do me a favor? Could you take off your detective's cap for a little while and just become human? I can you do that for me? I can do that. Now, as a human, what would be your favorite words? Uh, I guess I would say thank you. Thank you? Nobody's ever said that to me before, at least not sincerely. I'm sorry to hear that. Now let me ask you, Dr. Ridge. Uh, what about me? What are your two favorite words? Well, uh, how about this? The results are negative. Okay. I want you to do me a favor. Okay. Take off your doctor's cap for a moment and try to be human. I can do that. Thank you. I appreciate that. You're welcome. You know what? What? Those are my favorite words. You're welcome? Yes. Excuse me for one second. Hello? Hey, Sydney. Yeah, he's here. You want to talk to him? Oh, okay. Yeah, I can tell him that. I can tell him that too. Okay. All right, I'll talk to you later. Goodbye. Uh, is everything okay? Uh, yeah, yeah, for you at least. What do you, what do you mean for me? Well, now that you've solved the Dinah Fellows kidnapping, um, you have your choice of assignment at any agency across the United States. Well, I mean, that's good news. Why couldn't he just tell, why couldn't Sidney just tell me that himself? Well, because he's busy trying to find Ernest Fellows. Ernest Fellows? What the hell for? It turns out uh, Ernest paid Gypsy a visit. <sighs> oh, no. Did he? Ernest Fellows took an axe to every piece of her body. Oh, no. And then he made wild love no. to every single piece. Gypsy has nothing to do with Dinah's kidnapping. Oh, God. <laughs> Funny, isn't it? Oh, my God. She was not to blame. Well, that's not entirely true. She's not to blame. I've had over a thousand female patients in my office, oh, and I can't tell you how many have very oh, specific my murder God. fantasies. They don't mind if a playboy or some scumbag or. <sighs> or bad boy comes and murders them. But when it comes to a nice guy, Jesus. when it comes to a nice guy murdering Jesus. them, uh, that just rocks them to the core. Oh, I mean... Jesus. Oh my God, wake up, Donald, please, wake up. Oh. I'm Jack Dolmus. Why are you staring at me like that? What? I can't understand you. I said... I'm Jack Dolmus. Why are you staring at me like that? You are not Jack Dolmus. Stop it. The Jack Dolmus I know is taller, with a darker complexion. Are you trying to be funny? What did you say? I said, are you trying to be funny? Uh, of course I am. Haha. <laughs> Navy humor. You know what I mean. I'm not feeling very jovial right now, Mr. Fellows. But it's over. I've got her back. You've got who? 
Dinah. Dinah. Shad. Was Gypsy involved? No, Shad did this on his own. Understand? Why would Shad want to steal Dinah? For a lie. It's all here. Where's Shad now? I confronted him, but he escaped. You're lucky I got Dinah's remains back, because he put up quite a fight. You notified the authorities, I take it. I informed Sidney Green. He'll take care of it. Do I get to keep her? She's your property. I need to prepare a bath. Warm water. Bubbles. Patchouli. I'm allergic to patchouli. The bath isn't for you. Here. The bath isn't for me either. Do you understand? She's my property. And I like to keep my property clean. A man of your upbringing ought to understand that. Why don't you have Carlin wash her? Carlin doesn't have the right hands for such a job. Here, feel mine. Delicate, aren't they? It takes a delicate touch to bathe a body like Dinah's. Carlin doesn't have the capacity for such responsibility. Do you know how else Carlin earns his living, dullness? He's a furniture tester. He gets to relax all day long, sitting on upholstery. No, it wouldn't do to have Carlin bathe her. It has to be me, my hands. Do you understand? I'll be speaking with your Sydney Green. I'm going to say a lot of things about you. Good things. You'll be right here, won't you? Yes, why? Just wondering. Listen, Ernest! I'm going to hang on to this. I hope you don't mind. <laughs> 